So could you introduce us sure. to one of your resources that yeah. help us with, uh, uh, help, <laughs> help your colleagues so, reduce their stress? Yeah, and this is a great part of what we've, um, what we've done here in New Hampshire. So um, the New Hampshire Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force recognizes that we as an organization have to be capable of doing a lot of different things and we have to do a lot of things well. So we've brought in a lot of different components the enforcement, the education, all of that. And now that we've sort of started to develop, develop, develop a program for mental health, we also recognized that we could use even more help, not only in the investigative and criminal side, but also in that mental health piece. We wanted yes. to combine our efforts. So uh, what we did was we researched a number of different projects that are out there. And one of them is the ESD K9 program, which is electronic storage device uh, K9. Um, they have been going on now for a handful of years. I think we should do that one more time so people understand. Yeah, electronic, electronic storage device canine. Yep, or ESD a for dog. short. A dog. A <laughs> dog. And so uh, <laughs> we decided we want to get into that project. We want to get that project for a lot of reasons. They do a lot of things for you. One, uh, their so sole primary purpose is that they're trained canines who can be deployed into the field, into these environments where um, child predators are living or child predators are... Uh, storing data or material, and these dogs can be deployed in there to locate those items. So ESD canines um, can find as small as a micro SD card, uh, and they can find that hidden in containers. Uh, they can find flash drives, hard drives, computers, cell phones. Uh, they can find hidden cameras. Uh, there's um, the old not, days of the magazines under the yeah, mattress. Yeah, right. It's gone. <laughs> gone. ESD canines can find them uh, if, if they have electronics right, in them. Right. Right. Um, they're additionally, ESD canines are great because they also can um, do a number of other things. They're trained in therapy. They're trained in comfort. So New Hampshire developed uh, that project. We decided to get involved in that. And through funding here in New Hampshire, we were fortunate enough through uh, getting help from the governor's office and, and a lot of great people in New Hampshire, we were able to bring in um, New Hampshire's first ever electronic storage device canine. Uh, he's the only one of his kind here in New Hampshire. Uh, his name is Nico, and uh, we have him here with us today. Um, Nico was born in Michigan. And Nico's we, on, on camera now. Yeah, Nico was born in Michigan and raised uh, to be a seeing eye dog and was uh, career changed when they found out that he just liked to give a lot of love all the time um, and brought into the world of electronic storage detection. He's not a comfort dog, although he does provide a lot of great comfort and his, his, his environment in the lab is great. He comes into the lab and he takes investigators who are looking at thousands of images of, of, of sensitive material and really allowing those people to take a break from the horrors that they have to see every day. He's also just fantastic because we can bring Nico um, into those search warrants and after he's done his work there and after he's done all the things that he has to do in finding electronics, uh, he can then sit with child victims and he can provide them comfort as well. So he does all of those things and he does it very well. Um, so through funding, through um, the state of New Hampshire, we were able to get Nico and bring him out here. He was trained in Indiana from a company called Jordan Detection. Um, he is absolutely a fantastic dog and has a great personality. He's also very good at what he, he does. Um, before we were over here today, he was at his 11th search warrant since he's been here in New Hampshire. Um, last week alone, uh, he was at four different search warrants over the course of three days. Um, at every search warrant that we have deployed Nico into so far, he has found electronics that were missed by search teams. And that's important. So we're asking human beings to go into these homes in tough environments with tough things going on and asking them for, to search for this type of material, flash drives, hard drives, cell phones, and interview suspects and be safe and don't get hurt and all these things and rescue victims if they live in the home. And that's a lot. And homes are big, and they can have lots of places things can be hidden. So what we like to do is go in and search those homes, let the suspects, if they live in that home, know that we have this dog with us, and then we deploy that dog in there to help us find anything that's missing. And um, Nico does a good job of that. He's a great equalizer for us because he reassures us that we didn't miss anything, and if we did, he lets us know. Uh, and he certainly will let you know because he's a food-based trained dog. <laughs> right, and, right, uh, right. And uh, he has to eat, and so we're, we're really proud of the work that he does. He's... As you can see today, he's a real ball of fire right now. Um, I was going to say, I, uh, earlier, I, I had the benefit of seeing an example of this. Did you set something up today that we might be able to watch yeah. today? So awesome. one, of the, one of the great things was being awesome. able to come in and work with him. Yeah. He's different than a lot of different dogs in a lot of ways. He has a set job, right? So he certainly is um, designed here to help investigators be successful in, in these crime scenes. Um, 
he's also designed to help our victims and help our investigators, but he doesn't work like regular dogs. So, you know, most people get up in the morning and feed their dog and they go off to That's work. Right. Uh, Nico works for every bit of food that he gets. So he is what they call a food-based trained dog. It looks like he's having a dream right now. And um, he's a food-based trained dog and he has to find electronics to get fed. So every day he works on finding electronics and we work in places like houses, businesses, fields, cars, um, you know, uh, every environment you can imagine, gyms, uh, public places, we hide electronics for him to find. And uh, he does a great job doing that. And he gets every meal fed. He's going through He's a having dream. a dream, dream, yeah. And he gets every meal fed uh, right through my hand every day. Yeah. And so um, food-based trained dogs are fantastic. He is extremely successful because he works very hard. And one of these, the byproducts of that is he gets very tired. Um, he's about 18 months old right now. Uh, and he is um, a hard worker. And when he's done working for the day, he wants to rest. And so that's what he's doing for us right now, which is very <laughs> cute. Um, and you can imagine why people love him. Yeah. And the ESD K9 program is something that we're super proud of here in New Hampshire because it is the first ever. Um, nobody else has a dog like him here in New Hampshire that does the work that he does. Um, and he is not just a great partner to law enforcement for his comfort. He is solving crimes. He is finding important evidence that's going to help hold people accountable that have hurt kids. One of the things that I like to tell people is that every time a child image is viewed, whether it's an image or, or a picture, that child has been victimized again. Nico helps stop the victimization. He tracks down the items in the home for us and he helps us bring those people to justice. And we are super grateful for the work done by the governor's office to help us get our hands on this dog and the funding uh, that we got through uh, a grant called Forensic Shield. Um, we don't believe that we could be as successful as we are without all the different things that we, that we have to do in these environments to, to get the predators. Nico gives us one more angle, one more assurance that when we leave the house, we've taken everything that we need to take to make sure that we've taken all those images out of the world. You know, we talked before about, about how do you stop this from happening, and it's about stopping the flow. Right. Once the flow is out there, we have to collect it all. Nico helps us collect that stuff. And, and we, uh, I am humbled by it. It's a humbling job uh, to be uh, able to handle this dog. Um, and the folks at, at Jordan Detection who uh, trained him and trained me uh, are fantastic people who um, believe in what we do. And they have um, really changed the game here in New Hampshire for us by getting us this dog, pairing him with me, making sure that we bonded and making sure that that we could successfully handle this dog and work him in the field, not only to make sure that he's safe, but to make sure that we hold people accountable. Now, Nico lives with you. He does. He yeah. lives with me. He's part of my family. Uh, and you know what's great is um, because I work through the sheriff's office and, I, and I'm assigned to the task force, um, he loves visiting. He visits every day. He visits investigators who aren't even working in the field of child pornography or child sexual exploitation. He spends time out there um, in the public you know, greeting people. He's a great ambassador sure. to internet crime here in New Hampshire and how we can protect kids and what we should be doing to protect kids. And um, I have brought along a few photos today that I can show you that um, really sort of segue what we've been doing. It. I was fortunate enough to have uh, the help of some people out in, um, in, the, in, 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 in uh, Indiana where I went to train with him. I, sh I apologize there. And um, they got some great photos of Nico working. So, um, you know, when we were there, I got some photos taken that I'm proud of. These are all, I also brought some photos of Nico learning along the way. Uh, Todd Jordan from Jordan Detection spent time working him in every environment that you can imagine to train the dog to find things and teach him how to climb up on things and how to navigate things and how to look around. And so uh, Todd is a huge mentor of mine. I am uh, I, I grew a great relationship with him in the short time that I've got to know him. Great um, and right yeah, he, uh, he has taught me that uh, in a short time that you can reinvent who you are in law enforcement and continue to help people um, if, if you're willing to try something new. Uh, I spent the bulk of my... Great description of yourself. Yeah, yes. yeah yes. I spent the bulk of my 15 years in detectives, you know, uh, working on becoming a... Um, highly trained interviewer and I did hundreds and hundreds of interviews of child uh, pornographers in, in, in New Hampshire and um, you know uh, Todd was I was grateful to meet Todd because he taught me how to reinvent myself there 
and how to look at the what I do a whole different way and it has re-energized me and I am um, I'm grateful for that because we, we have to bring that back here to New Hampshire and we're bringing it back to help our state, to help our kids, to help our investigators. It's, it's a great project. It's one of the greatest things I've ever done. And, and it's, a, it's cool. It's just cool, you know, and, and who doesn't want Nico for a partner, right. you know? So um, we're very lucky here in New Hampshire to have him. And um, one of the goals that we have is to continue to, once COVID, um, hopefully, you know, hopefully we get through this COVID thing safely right. and we can get him out in the public a little bit more where we can have more events and get people to understand what's going on and demonstrate more for him. Uh, this program that you're hosting today is important to us because it's giving us a chance to uh, let everybody know about Nico and yeah. to talk a little bit about him and to get the conversation going and to let them know that, you know, that we're still out here fighting for their kids yeah. and that, and that they're still, it's still happening. Yeah. Like we, we still have to take this stuff very seriously and, um, and that when, when COVID ends, they'll get a chance to meet him. He's, a, he's going to be a great icon here. In now, have you hidden something here? So, yeah. So here today we did uh, a bunch of hiding earlier. Okay. And he, and he did great. I know nothing about this. So. Yeah. So this will be fun to watch. Yeah. It, he did a great job. Uh, he does it every day. And whether it's a crime scene or a training uh, demonstration right. for him, he, he, loves to, he loves to work. And, and he wants to work because that's how he's going to eat, right? So <laughs> I think it's important that everybody understands that. And he's going to be uh, also a, part of, a big part of our social media initiative. Uh, we've really... Um, that's awesome, too. We've started to do more there. Over the years, everybody was busy, and so one of the things I said, look, when we get Nico here, let's let's try to ramp that up, and we can use him to be part of that platform. So he's going to be putting out great messages. We want to draw in not just parents but kids. Yes. And Nico will do that. Yes. You know, and and he's he's not a bite dog. He doesn't bite people. Um, he eats right out of my hand, and he is as gentle as they come. He's been trained to be that way. Uh, he's part lab, uh, part golden, and um, he is 100%. Uh, a fantastic dog for New Hampshire, and, and really, we're super proud of him at ICAC. The investigators are growing to love him. Uh, when we have briefings in the morning before we execute search warrants, people look for Nico to come in on the briefing and, and get the investigators ready to go out there because they know they're going to see some awful things, and uh, he, he lightens the load for people. And then to come to the crime scene and, and not only leverage suspects with him, letting them know we have a weapon that we can bring in here to find it all, but also to let the kids who are living in those environments have a moment of of peace and, and, and maybe feel a little bit better about what they're dealing That's great. with. It's kind of neat. Yeah. That's great.